Welcome to today's webinar on why did 100 hackers just attack my Oracle Business Suite environment. Before we get started, let me introduce myself. My name is Steve Coast. I'm the co-founder and chief technology officer of Integrity. I've been working with Oracle products since 1994, and for the past 18 years, I've been focused on the security and auditing aspects of the Oracle Business Suite and Oracle Database. Today's webinar is timely based on recent events within the Oracle Business Suite security world. A security vulnerability was released publicly, and then Oracle had to scramble and release advisory on Friday. What makes this vulnerability so interesting is that the way it was disclosed and the aftermath of that, and a large number of Oracle Business Suite environments who are on the internet actually were hacked and lost sensitive data. We'll walk through why did that happen? Why was there such a mad rush? And this is kind of a change in the paradigm of what's happening in the Oracle Business Suite security world. This has been happening in other areas, but this is new to Oracle Business Suite. So we're gonna dive into that and really explain to you what happened and why this is kind of a paradigm shift in terms of what's happening. This is most relevant for organizations that have their Oracle Business Suite on the internet. However, it is still relevant for those who are running it internally. Before we get started, a brief background about Integrity. Integrity was founded in 2002 by former Big Six consultants working on large ERP implementations. Back then, people weren't changing the apps password from apps. We've come a long ways. But again, Oracle Business Suite is a very large, massive application and very difficult to secure. Integrity specializes in helping you secure your Oracle Business Suite environment. We also do this for PeopleSoft, as well as a number of database platforms, particularly Oracle and Microsoft SQL Server. The way we help our clients secure their environments is by a set of products and services. For our products, we have AppSentry, Think of it as a security tool that's specialized for Oracle Business Suite and PeopleSoft and databases. You may have a security auditing tool such as Nessus, Qualys, that work very well at the operating system and network layers. AppSentry specializes for products like the Oracle Business Suite. So when AppSentry scans and looks at an Oracle Business Suite environment to validate the security configuration, and it's doing that against things like the secure configuration guide for Oracle Business Suite, which Integrity wrote, but we're doing it 10 times the number of checks that are in there, 10 times the number of checks that are in the Secure Configuration Council. And it's doing it at the application, database, and application server layer. So it's giving you very robust information about the st state and posture of security of the Oracle Business Suite environment. We also offer App Defend, which is a proactive layer of defense. This is an enterprise application firewall for Oracle Business Suite and PeopleSoft. This goes way above and beyond the other security tools you may have. You may have a web application firewall in place today in front of Oracle Business Suite. However, that only provides limited protection for an Oracle Business Suite environment. App Defend is specialized for Oracle Business Suite. It's got specific checks, provides virtual patching. We also provide services to our clients on a daily basis. So every day we're working with Oracle Business Suite customers, helping them secure their Oracle Business Suite environment by doing a number of different things. One is doing security assessments, validating the security of their environments. We're helping them when they have compliance challenges like Sarbanes-Oxley, PCI, HIPAA, GDPR, et cetera. Then we're also helping them do design and requirements definition around Oracle Business Suite with additional security products such as transparent data encryption, Oracle Database Vault, third-party products like Imperva and Guardium that are database auditing tools. And finally, we're backed up by a world-class research team. So every day we're working and breaking Oracle Business Suite, looking for security vulnerabilities and other issues in the application and working very closely with Oracle, especially the Oracle Business Suite development team to help correct those bugs as well as secure and improve the security of the application overall. We're also an Oracle Gold partner, so we have a very good relationship with Oracle. So that's enough of the background about Integrity. What I'll do is this will be a very interactive presentation in terms I'll be jumping around here a little bit, going into a lot of information and actually showing you examples here. So we'll kind of do a little timeline here and start from the beginning. What happened here? So on May 14th, Godfather Orwa, that is his kind of quote, hacker name, published out on his blog 
um, and he does that on the medium.com site, published out detailed information about a security flaw in Worldview Business Suite. Godfather R was a full-time job, and this is where it becomes very interesting. I'm kind of highlighting a few key passages here. Godfather Orwa is a full-time bug bounty hunter. This is what he does. And what a bug bounty hunter does is they find security vulnerabilities, weaknesses in both products as well as sites. So he's doing this against Amazon, Facebook, other large organizations, submitting this vulnerability information to them, and he's getting paid for it. This is his full-time job. This is kind of the paradigm shift. This is not someone trying to hack in and steal your social security numbers or do some fraud against the environment. This is someone hacking into your environment in order to then tell you about it and then get some money out of you. Large corporations like Amazon, Facebook, Google all have programs called bug bounty programs that they will then accept these reports from security researchers who are now called bug bounty hunters and actually validate it and then pay them a small amount of money for each time they find one. This is profitable. You can make money doing this. There is a community around this. There are thousands of these people doing this and making money for full time. And as you can see, they also have sites like Bug Crowd, um, Hacker One, that ranks them, that they can actually publish the information through. So in this term, Godfather Orwa is basically number 66 on the list of the bug crowd bug hunters. So he's actually up there. He's a fairly proficient at this and making uh, some decent money doing it. This is kind of an issue now. Now you don't know is this kind of, and you could refer to these people as white hack hackers. They aren't necessarily doing this to steal money, do something malicious to your site. They're doing this to make money on the side as kind of a, some people do it just as a side hobby. Some people actually do it as a profession. But there's a community out here. So there's thousands of Oracle Business Suite sites on the internet. Godfather Oral can't touch them all, can't go after them all. So what they do is share this information out. And that's why all of a sudden you'll, you'll get this mad rush of people looking and trying to exploit these vulnerabilities in order to get a payday that Godfather Orwa probably went to the ones that he knows very quickly that have bug bounty programs, but the world now is hack first, ask for payment later. So what he then did was publish out on this blog post after he probably submitted this to a number of large organizations that he knew had bug bounty programs. He then published it out for all his bug bounty hunter buddies to say, hey, I found this vulnerability. And by the way, it's a package application. There's thousands out there. Why don't you guys go look and see what, if you can make some money off of it too? And that's how you build credentials, how you make friends and things like that. Because, hey, you're throwing something out there. You're kind of done with it. You moved on to the next thing. But you know you only hit 10, 20, 30 sites. You may have made 10, 20, $30,000 off that because you may be making five hundred to $5,000 per site. You have to hit 10, 20 sites. You can make a nice payday. And it kind of becomes a little bit more difficult, but hey, why don't I throw it out to everybody else and say, hey, why don't you guys all try this? And therefore he published out very detailed information about exactly what URLs to access and I'll actually go through and demonstrate this. And then told you how to find Oracle Business Suite environments on the internet. And I'll kind of, I'll definitely demonstrate out all parts of this. So it's a very detailed write up about what you needed to do. He gave Every, all the other bug bounty hunters who probably follow each other and have alerts on each other's websites to hey, pop up and let me read what's happening. And he gave very detailed instructions because again, Oracle Business Suite is a little bit different of an application. A lot of these bug bounty hunters would not be familiar with it. And he gave them a very nice detailed write-up. This was before it even got reported to Oracle. So this was published out. And the story becomes even more interesting here in a second. I'll kind of just finish walking through. So in the presentation that you'll be sent, I'll, I'm giving you all URLs, but again, it's screenshots, which buttons to click, what information to input, things like that, how to actually re reproduce this very easily. As well as then if there's another misconfiguration, if you have FND Diagnostics enabled, very clearly walk you through how to actually use FND Diagnostics to even do more problematic things within Rocky Business Suite versus just the core vulnerability. So he published this out on his website, and then the next step was he put it out on Twitter. And so again, 
a lot of these guys are following each other on Twitter. If they're not, they're probably following these hashtags, bug bounty, bug bounty tips. Because again, a bug bounty tip is I found it. I'm kind of done with it. I'm going to open up the community, let you guys make some money uh, because I kind of made my own and kind of become a little bit more difficult. I moved on to the next best thing. So he published it out on Twitter under these hashtags, which then got started getting picked up by a number of other people. And again, hey, thanks. Thanks. Join the party. Um, thanks. You're insane. You're a great guy. I, I apologize. There are some fairly graphic comments in here um, as I go through this. I, I apologize for that. Uh, but that's kind of how the communication happens here. And as you walk through, they're asking questions. They're looking for tips like, OK, how do you actually find these? What are some of the tips? I couldn't get this to work. Um, we've got one down here. How did you actually find this and things like that? So they're actually communicating, talking back and forth that, hey, this vulnerability is out there. This is different than other vulnerabilities. Most people keep it close to the chest because what they're trying to do in terms of a couple of years ago, they were going after your social security numbers. They were looking for credit card numbers. They were looking for things they could sell. You didn't want to communicate this out like this because, again, it decreases the value of your product. Because if you steal a bunch of credit card numbers, you want that to be somewhat unique. You don't want someone else to go in behind you, steal the credit card numbers, and also post it to some of the, like, the credit card auction sites and things like that. But this is a different world that these guys are sharing. They're giving out. They're helping each other. They're doing tips and things like that. So this is kind of a very different paradigm. And they're going through and say <clears throat> how this information is. Now what's interesting is he didn't even actually submit this information to Oracle. He did not submit this as a security alert to Oracle to get credit for it. So if you kind of go through the rest of the Twitter link, you can kind of start seeing some information about, hey, we submitted this Oracle, your name, you're not getting credit for it, things like that. Um, we've got one case here. Hey, somebody else got in and actually it's working. He pulled up on a site. We, it's not disclosing what site it is, um, but it's disclosing that, hey, I found this information. Another guy, hey, here's another site that they hacked. And they're sharing the screenshots and things. Um, fortunately, they're blurring out some of the sensitive data um, because, again, they're kind of on the white hat side. They're here doing this not maliciously they're trying to get money out of the organization so they don't want to anger the organization that hey i truly hacked you and published the information on the internet what they want to say is i hacked you i'm helping you out i'm disclosing this report to you um, so it's a, these are kind of very interesting twitter feeds again this is just one this is just oracle business suite but they're going through and say hey here it is i Somebody else hacked another site. So again, these are Oracle Business Suite environments being hacked. They're not publishing out what sites are being hacked, but they are actively breaking in, gathering the data. Therefore, they can then send this information to the um, Oracle Business Suite customer and saying, hey, you have the security vulnerability. I found it. I can tell you more about it. You pay me $500, $1,000. Um, I'll, I'll give you all the information, those types of things. And that's the way this works. And you can, can see that, hey, they're just trading it back and forth. And so what was very interesting and what happened here was in terms of actually getting credit for this, the typical process would be that you would actually find this vulnerability, you would report it to Oracle, Oracle would fix it, and then issue out the security advisory, the patch as part of the critical patch update. That did not happen in this case at all. Godfather Orwa basically took it and published it out immediately. And these guys are going through. And what ended up happening was a number of these people actually then submitted it to Oracle, getting credit for it. And Godfather Orwa actually didn't get credit in the security advisory from Oracle for finding it. A bunch of other people all reported it simultaneously to Oracle, and they all got credit. Um, so kind of a very interesting turn of events here and the way it's working. But the key point here is the world has changed slightly. There's a little bit more focus. People are actively making money off of doing this. And that's a different world than it was a couple of weeks ago in the Oracle Business Suite world. This was happening in many other areas. If you at Facebook, if you kind of hack and find a vulnerability in Facebook, Twitter, Google, those types of things. But those are one-off sites. Those aren't a package software. The world has now come to the package software world, Oracle Business Suite, PeopleSoft, SAP. 
they now know that they can make some money and be active. And if you go through these Twitter chains, and there's a couple of comments, hey, I made $2,500 or I made $500 or I made $1,500. So money is actively being made from these. That's the key. So there is a motivation for here. The problem is that you don't know if this was malicious or one of these bug bounty programs. So you may see 10 different people came in because again, it's a gold rush. They're rushing in. You don't know if nine out of 10 were bug bounty hunters and were sending you reports or was one of them actually malicious trying to steal the data, do something maliciously. And the problem here is these guys had blood in the water. Hey, we were able to do with one vulnerability. Are there other vulnerabilities? Therefore, a bunch of these guys are now looking and trying to go after your Oracle Business Suite environments, looking for vulnerabilities so they can cash in next. And again, this is ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars at some of these better. If you're better at this, you can make a, a five figures in a week's worth of work. That's significant for some of these people. Because when we go and we'll kind of jump out to Hacker One here, this is Godfather Orwa's site on Hacker One, and so you can see that he's submitting a large number of vulnerabilities to large different locations. So again, the Marriott bug program, AT&T, Starbucks, Amazon. And if we then click on and look at, you can see how much these organizations are paying. So if we click on and look at Amazon here, Amazon pays out. So these are the numbers. So if it's a low risk vulnerability, it's 150. Dollars. If it's a medium risk, it's three hundred fifty to five hundred. If it's high risk, fifteen hundred to five thousand. It's a critical vulnerability. You can make up to twenty thousand dollars. The key is for Oracle Business Suite. Now you multiply that across a large number of organizations. So there's organizations like AT and T, Amazon, Starbucks. These are all Oracle Business Suite customers. We don't necessarily know if the, these environments are on the internet, if their Oracle Business Suite's environments are externally accessible in the DMC um, with modules like iSupplier. But as you can see, these people are very aware of this and they understand how much money they can make. So again, here's Starbucks, here's how much they pay. So there is a real incentive here. And to date, Starbucks has paid almost $800,000 in bounties. So there is real money behind this, real motivation, and that's the very important part to understand. So that's kind of the background. That's how it happened. Now what we'll do is dive into the actual vulnerability itself. So Oracle, based on this information, had to release an immediate security advisory because, again, Oracle Business Suite environments on the Internet are actively being attacked and hacked. You may say, well, that's not a big deal because it's all white hack people, but you don't know that. You don't know if malicious actors are now get, coming into play and looking for vulnerable sites. So Oracle on May 19th released an immediate advisory, an out of cycle advisory from the critical patch updates for the Oracle Business Suite environment. This is very rare. And so as you can see, there are a number of people reported this to Oracle. So when you're thinking about who, how many people are involved in this, when we started adding up and trying to figure out the names, we got to about 100 and stopped. So 100 people have either commented on the Twitter chains or had credit statements. There's 100 names involved when we look through different points here. And so again, this is a, this is a vulnerability in the application. Fortunately, it's only an information disclosure if we go through uh, the actual risk matrix. Um, so a little background here for those not familiar. The CVE number is a unique identifier for a security vulnerability. And this is used by most of the major vendors, including Oracle, Facebook, Google, Microsoft. And it's just, and it's the common vulnerability enumeration. So there's the National Vulnerability Database maintains a list of all security vulnerabilities and software products. They assign a, an identifier is assigned out and it's a CVE identifier. So if you Google CVE 2022, 21500, you'll find additional information. You'll find like our notes. So whenever you see within our analysis, we're identifying this unique vulnerability with this unique code. And it's telling you that it's in Oracle Business Suite. It's in the managed proxies. It's remotely exploitable without authentication. This is a very critical piece is that I need to 
just be able to see Oracle e Business Suite and I can actually hack it and do this attack. This is a little interesting one because usually it's either remotely off exploitable without authentication or you need an account in Oracle Business Suite to hack it. In this case, it's kind of unique because I can do it because I really don't need authentication because the, there's a two parts to the vulnerability. One is I can self-register with the Oracle Business Suite. So what he, the, the, <clears throat> this bug bounty hunter here found an issue in Oracle Business Suite that allows me to self-register. And if I self-register, which is a feature that's available even though I haven't installed it or configured it, which then gives me access to the managed proxies. And the vulnerability is actually in the managed proxies, not the, in the fact that I can self-register, but I need to self-register. Then that gives me an account, and that account doesn't have any privileges. Therefore, the managed proxy is a little too wide open, and I can see everybody in the database or in the Oracle Business Suite environment. Attack complexity is low. That means... It's well published out. I don't really need any real rocket science here. I can actually do it fairly readily. Anybody who can actually read can probably walk through these steps with no problem. Even your AAP accounts payable clerk could probably do it. In terms of actually the vulnerability, there's three elements. Confidentiality is I can read data. Integrity is that means I can write data to your OK Business Suite environment. And availability means I can basically just bring down the database. I can crash the database. I can wipe out all the data or something like that. This vulnerability is only a read-only. I can read some sensitive data. In this case, I can read your, the username, first name, last name, and email address of everyone in the FND user table. So everyone who's in Oracle Business Suite has a user account, I can read those four pieces of information. So again, username, first name, last name, and email address. So again, that's not, the most critical vulnerability in the world. But again, if you're GDPR, which is the European Privacy Regulation, that could potentially be deemed an issue under GDPR. Because again, it's sent personal information, first name, last name, tied to an email address. If someone can access all those in your environment, that could potentially be a GDPR violation. And then finally, the supported versions, we've been able to demonstrate this all the way back to 11.5. So it, Oracle is only today supporting 12.1, 12.2. However, we have been able to demonstrate this vulnerability in 11.5, 12.0, as well as 12.1 and 12.2. So this really impacts all Oracle Business Suite environments, even though um, they're not supported by Oracle anymore. And Oracle doesn't publish this information out for unsupported versions, uh, i.e. 12.5 and 12.0. So that's the risk matrix. So what's happening here is people are then looking for Oracle Business Suite environments on the internet. And there's a couple ways to do that. So if I go to Google, and this is very simple to do, and I apologize for anyone on the call whose sites may inadvertently show up, but it actually is a wake-up call for you then. So if I just go into Google and use a special code um, keyword called in URL, I can then search for a pattern in the URL. So the URL is basically the address of the website. And I know from an Oracle Business Suite website, it's very unique that OAHTML is in the URL because that's how the OA core works. So everyone's familiar with the mapping of the URLs and the paths within Oracle Business Suite. HTML is the primary path for the application. So all I have to do is do in URL, OAHTML, and now it's popping up Orky Business Suite sites left and right. This is how these guys find it. This is the path. So they basically have a vulnerability and I just now have to look for different sites on the internet. And again, the FDA pops up, uh, Humana, Viasat pop up very quickly. And there's pages and pages of these. Um, kind of scroll down, we'll see. And again, it just goes on and on and on. And so again, a lot of different organizations. That's a very simple query within Google. I can make this much more complex and get down to even more details. So that's just with Google. So that's a very simple case with just using Google. So your environment can show up in Google. Um, one of the problems with Google is that you're thinking, hey, my Oracle Business Suite site isn't on Google because we're very careful about the robots.txt file. Google is not adhering to the robots.txt file, 
which is a small file you put on the website, which is configured properly in Oracle Business Suite to disallow the search engines from actually indexing your site is the way it's supposed to work. Google in the last couple of years has basically been ignoring robots.txt file because if there's any links into your site from an external location, it says, well, you have a link out in the world, so we're just going to ignore the robots.txt file. Do you actually need to add an additional parameters, which are not in Oracle Business Suite, to the site in order to disallow Google from actually indexing your site and including it in its search results? Our app Defend product already includes that in, so it's actually protecting your site already. However, Google's not the only way they can do this. There are a couple things called security search engines. So security search engines are actually looking for all the sites on the internet and doing a similar thing that Google is doing, but instead of concentrating on giving you information about the site, in terms of searching for the text and searching for maybe a product or I'm looking for a new TV or something like that. The security search engines are indexing all that other information around the site that gets delivered, like the headers of the site, the meta tags of the site, which then allow you to actually search for that. It also does IP address ranges. So I can actually search an IP address range looking for what sites are there. And I'll make this a little bit bigger so hopefully you can see it. And so as part of the original exploit information published out, he actually included exactly what you need to do, a little trick in order to find Oracle Business Suite sites. And again, OAHTML also works here. He had another trick to do it. And this is one thing that's actually blocked by our App Defend product already. So again, this is there's additional information published out by Oracle Business Suite, additional headers that are published out. This Shodan security search engine actually indexes all those. So if you can find one of those, and again, Oracle Business Suite publishes out a very unique one, you can look for it very quickly. So again, he's got a search string here that's looking for a very specific header with Oracle Business Suite. And again, looking for a login page, and we'll click search here. Again, this is how quickly I can find your Oracle Business Suite environments. So again, we're finding a couple sites here. Um, the city of St. Pete has their site out here. Again, we're looking at a large a bunch of different sites that are running on various versions of Oracle Business Suite. And it looks at certificates, who they're issued by. And again, it's capturing not, not the information that's on the web page, but it's capturing all this other information in terms of security headers and things like that. So this is how people find these sites very quickly. One of the goals should be for Oracle Business Suite security is to make sure you're not showing up in these lists. Unfortunately, that's very difficult to do. Uh, one of our clients who's on the call today said, hey, we're blocking this with our web application firewall, with our uh, ingress routers and things like that. So blocking Google at that site is a very good idea, as well as running a tool like AppDefend, which then also will block some of this information to try to keep you out of this. This is security through obscurity. But in order to find this information, this is what I'm doing. I don't have time just to search the internet. These guys don't really have that time and patience and effort to send off a crawler that just crawls through the internet that takes days and days looking for it. They just don't have time. They don't care about that. I want to just get a quick hit because I'll move on to something else fairly quickly because again, I'm doing this as a living. I'm trying to make a couple thousand dollars off of each site I find. I don't have time to actually send a crawler on the internet to search the entire internet. That might take a week and give me thousands of false results that I have to pile through. I'd rather just pop into Shodan, pop it up. It's even telling me what countries it in, uh, what ports, um, the organizations, what products they're running. It gives me a lot of information. So now I've got hits, hit after hit. And again, I've got 945 live environments here that potentially could be targets. Again, I only need to hit 10 of those. I don't need to hit all 945. I just need to hit 10, make $1,000 each, $10,000. Um, that's a pretty good living for a week's worth of work because if I can do that, find one of these vulnerabilities each week, I'm making $120,000 a year or actually uh, 501 week, $10,000, $500,000 a year. I don't even need to do that. I just probably need to make $100,000, right? Um, so these numbers come up very quickly. 
and I can actually make a living off of it. That's how they find it. So the next step is we'll actually demonstrate the vulnerability here. Um, so I've got a 12.2.10 environment here running the latest version of Oracle Business Suite. And I'm, here's a login page. Let's assume I'm running Oracle Business Suite on the internet using iSupplier. Again, my suppliers can connect. So I'm on the internet, I'm running in the DMZ. It's accessible. And I'm just pulling, this is no new information. This is pulling the steps in the process exactly what was published out. So there's nothing new here. There's nothing unique. We're just walking you through the steps. So even though you may not be running iStore, there are certain iStore pages that are available by default, if you don't, if you haven't properly and correctly configured your environment, that allows me to go in. So even though this says Vision Enterprises, this pops up in many Oracle Business Suite environments, depending on a few configuration settings. And I'll go through that in a second. So I'll, what I'll do is just pick a register as an individual. I'll go in. We'll just put it. It doesn't really matter what you put in on all this information. Let's put in fake email address. You don't really want to use your own. Now we actually go in, put in, we'll create a user ID here. I'll we'll do attacker one, give it a password. Now hit submit. And so what I'm doing is actually registering a user. I've self-registered a user in the environment. Again, this in most e-business suite environments, even though you're not running iStore or anything, this is accessible because with Oracle Business Suite, all modules are installed by default. All functionality is partially enabled by default, some more so than others. This is one of those pieces of functionality that's in, enabled in your site, even though you haven't installed, configured, or licensed iStore. And then I'll do a little trick. He, had, he, went, he logged out and logged back in, uh, but I just happen to know the URL. So I'll actually just go in and go right to the home page. So again, I've created an account. And now where the vulnerability is, is again, I'm in as an iStore customer, not a big deal because again, iStore is not configured. So I'm actually gonna get errors when I actually try to do some stuff in it. But the managed proxies capability is there, is enabled by default in this scenario. And so in a standard installation of Oracle Business Suite, it is enabled by default. So now I can click add proxy. I can now go search for proxies. And this is truly, this is the vulnerability now that I can actually go in and this is what they were talking about. And this is a vision install environment. Um, so I don't have a lot of real data, but as you can see, I've now got username, first name, last name, and email address. And I'll kind of scroll through this. And again, this is vision, so I don't really have a lot of real data, but in your environment, if you were able to do this, you're able to see all every single user in the FND user table um, with their usernames and email addresses if they have one configured. So this is kind of the vulnerability. It's an information disclosure vulnerability based on your compliance requirements. Is this a serious risk to the environment? Well, it's not trivial. Is it a GDPR violation? You'd have to talk to your legal counsel and things like that uh, to see if it was hacked. But that is the vulnerability. There's nothing else I can really do here. There's I can pick a proxy and kind of give myself uh, have someone pro as a proxy, but there's not much else I can do. This is the vulnerability in terms of the information disclosed out in the issue. In the orig original issue published out, Godfather Oro got to this point, but also one of the sites he discovered had FND Diagnostics enabled. And if I have FND Diagnostics enabled, I can then actually do see a lot of other information. And if I can get to the developer council as part of FND Diagnostics, again, it's just a URL I can click on and access, I can then execute at, uh, SQL statements as the apps user. And I can, let's say, query the entire FND user table. I can query your supplier table. Um, it's supposedly query only, but there's certain functions that are autonomous transaction functions that I can actually execute too. Um, so I can potentially write data in certain limit, limited circumstances to the database also. Uh, but that was kind of a caveat. That's in any environment where OK Business Suite is installed and has FND diagnostics enabled. This is the vulnerability um, through and through. So we've published out a very detailed advisory. Um, 
We'll include a link uh, in the email that we send out after this presentation. But if you just go to the integrity.com website, you'll be able to click on this uh, very quickly and look at it. What I'll do is kind of go fairly quickly through a little bit of background information, kind of talk about how is the vulnerability addressed and how do you actually exploit it. The information being published out today is incorrect in many cases. So you have to be very careful about reading what's on the internet because there's a number of points that <clears throat> have information about this vulnerability and how to fix it, and that's incorrect. So when we walk through this, keep that in mind that a lot of people aren't Oracle eBusiness Suite experts, and they don't understand kind of what the true vulnerability is. So when we talk about the vulnerable pages in Oracle eBusiness Suite, Everyone's focused in on the IBE CA CP SSO reg.jsp page. That is just a landing page. The vulnerability is not in that page. The vulnerability is in a, several other pages. So if I block just the SSO reg page, I can still access the other pages directly. If I can find one site that I can access those pages, figure out the exact format of the URL, which is not that complicated. I can then access the URLs that actually create the user, the individual user, primary create, partner create, JSP pages. So that's why you need to test these additional pages. So if I access these pages directly, so the best thing to do is in your environment, if you wanna check if it's exploitable, is access these pages. So if I see a valid page come up, or if I see the Oracle Business Suite error page come up, that means they're vulnerable. The, if you see the Oracle eBusiness Suite error page, that means that I didn't provide all the parameters in the URL. I can still access the URL, and if I provide a valid URL with the correct parameters, I can actually do what I want to do. If you want to see it's truly blocked, if you're running App Defend, you'll get a 403 forbidden message. If you're running the URL firewall, you'll see a 410 gone message. If you're running allowed resources, which blocks uh, pages such as the JSP pages, I'll see a requested resource or page is not allowed in the site. If your web application firewall is blocking it, I, I'll get a different message. Those are very specific about what ab web application firewall you're running. But don't rely on just the SSO reg page. Those other three pages are very critical because the SSO reg page is just a landing page. The vulnerability is not in that page. It's actually in those other three pages because those pages actually allow me to register a user because it's a registration, then I've got too much privilege once I've reg self-registered a user, that's the vulnerability because I can then access the managed proxies. The second requirement for the vulnerability is I actually have to have this self-registration enabled. This is enabled by default in Oracle Business Suite. Somebody would have had to go in and actually change the system profile option to disable it, and that's very uncommon to happen. We haven't found any environment where we actually have seen that happen yet. So there's a system profile option, apps SSO user create update. If that is set to yes, that means your self-registration is allowed. If the parameter is not set, you don't see it when you actually do a query for that system profile option value, it, the default is yes. It has to be explicitly set to no to actually have it disabled. The third requirement is proxy delegation. So within the managed proxies capability, by default, it's set to all users. So when I can, when I can actually provide a proxy and I try to set up the proxy, by default, I can see all users. About 80% of our clients seem to have it still set to 80 to all users. About 20% have actually restricted this uh, based on either our secure assessments or um, other work being done. So depending on your Oracle Business Suite version, this is actually a newer feature. This proxy delegation feature is actually a newer feature. So in older versions of 12.2, uh, I believe it's before 12.2.4, and in a little bit older versions of 12.1.3, um, this feature doesn't exist, which therefore the default would be all users. So these three requirements, you have to have access to the page, you have to be able to self-register, and you have to have the proxy delegation feature set to all users in order to exploit the vulnerability. However, in most environments, we're seeing all three 
are lining up and are all three allow you to exploit the vulnerability. Typically, the first one is the one blocked because if you're running the first, trying to access the pages, if you have properly and correctly configured the URL firewall or allowed resources or running a tool like AppDefend, those would be blocking the iStore unless you're running iStore. If you're running iStore, those pages would be available even though you're running URL firewall, allowed resources, or AppDefend. So how do you protect against this? There's a number of different ways. One is blocking access to these vulnerable pages that let you self-register. They're very seldom do you need to self-register. And the only cases you need to self-register is either iStore or iRecruitment. So if you're running iStore or iRecruitment, you need to spend a little bit more time looking at this, what you need to do. If you're not running iStore or iRecruitment, these pages should be absolutely blocked. You can do that with our product app defend by default fault, we will block the iStore module externally. Um, it's very easy to configure AppDefend to only allow modules like iSupplier and absolutely what's required to reduce the surface area. Oracle provides the URL firewall and allowed resources page, um, which is AppDefend has a very robust way to block and reduce the surface area of the application. Um, it works across all the different web architectures, including the OA framework. Unfortunately, the URL firewall and allowed resources that are native functionality within Oracle Business Suite are limited. They only really block the JSP pages and some servlets. Um, so they do not provide complete coverage of the entire application. However, they're better, something is better than nothing. And therefore we definitely recommend you use your own firewall and allowed resources whenever possible. However, if you, if you want a better solution, AppDefend is a much better solution um, than the native capabilities within Oracle Business Suite. Um, but again, URL firewall and allowed resources has to be properly configured. When we see most of the vulnerable sites on the internet, they are not using URL firewall. They are not using allowed resources, and that's a problem. The third thing to do is actually change the managed proxies to disable it, to change it from all users. However, if you change this, this will be an issue within the organization because it's exploitable, but you may be using this functionality internally. So you have to spend some time looking at how are we actually using managed proxies? Who's actually using it? Can we actually change the privileges to a certain set of, of responsibilities? That's easier than it actually sounds because when you're thinking about who should be actually doing proxy delegation, you probably, if you're using self-service HR, everyone on the planet should not be doing managed proxies. You should be limiting it to a certain list of responsibilities that can actually do managed proxies. Um, so you want potentially your executive team, those types of people doing managed proxies, but you don't want everyone within Oracle Business Suite necessarily to do managed proxies. So this is actually a feature that you should probably be implementing anyways, in spite of this vulnerability, to limit that capability whenever possible. Um, the next feature is disabling user registration. Again, user registrations used for iStore and iRecruitment, depending on how you use those modules, you actually may need this functionality. However, unless if you're not using those modules, you can definitely disable this. So this would also stop the vulnerability. There's a significant issue if you are using iStore. One of the very common things to do, and I would say almost everybody does this, is you want to customize the look and feel of the iStore pages. So what you do is copy the standard iStore pages to custom pages, and those are typically prefixed with XX, which is the standard custom module name within Oracle Business Suite, and then you do it to your like um, kind of a couple digit code. Um, so for integrity, that would be like INT. So the custom module would be XXINT, and the INT would be for integrity. Then what you do is you copy the standard IBE pages and then prefix them with, in my, my example for integrity, would be XXINT, then IBE, CACP, SSO, Reg. So when you're looking for these pages, if you're using iStore, you have to be careful not to look for just the standard iStore pages, but also for the customized iStore pages. So this is a very important note if you are running iStore, so you have to spend a little bit more time. And finally, Oracle is intending to release a patch on this, most likely around managed proxies. Um, the last information on their website was that they were gonna actually do this on June 15th, uh, have the patch available. So next step is how do I actually detect these vulnerabilities? So the first thing, if you want to, if you 
go through and look, and we talked about which pages are accessible, and so those uh, different settings, if you meet all those criteria, then you'll want to be looking at your HTTP server access logs. So within Oracle Business Suite, depending on the version, these are stored in different directories. So you really want to see if these four specific pages have been accessed. Unless you're running iStore, these pages should never be accessed normally. So therefore, if you're not running iStore, any usage of these pages is definitely an indication that somebody was doing something maliciously. Maliciously, or in terms of the bug hunters, we're trying to figure out how to actually get some money out of you. And again, this is all in the white paper. It's clearly disclosed on our website. Um, so you can download this and get all this information. So if you have detected it in your access logs, did someone actually create any users? So this is the SQL statement that will show if any actual users were created. Um, so this is actually the next step. So where the pages access, did they actually create a user? I'll actually jump out to SQL Developer here to show you this query. So I've plugged this query into our Oracle Business Suite environment for <clears throat> to see. And again, I hacked it already. So they kind of very clearly show up. You can kind of see that somebody self-registered here and you can kind of check out their names and their email addresses. Again, if you're running iRecruitment and iStore, those users, and you allow self-registration already, those users would also show up. If you're not using that, no one should be in this table ever. So the, again, this is a vision environment. As you can see, previously they were testing out this functionality and using it. Uh, but what you're looking for is if any rows appear here and you're not running iStore or recruitment, that's problematic. So you need to be reviewing those and potentially end dating those accounts immediately if you see those accounts existing in the environment. And then finally, how do you know what got accessed? And this is the problem to know how many pages of data were actually accessed. Because what's happening is, again, the vulnerability was I was bringing up the list of values of users within the managed proxies capability. So the URL at the bottom of the page here shows you that actual URL. And so it's an OA framework page. So the URL will be OAJSP, will be the page access. And you actually have to look at the parameter region and be, the, the URL here will actually be much larger. And I, I want to go through and map this out. The problem here is that this is standard Oracle Business Suite functionality. So anyone who's actually done managed proxies, any of your internal users who've actually set up a proxy with another user would actually be using this also. So it, usage of this page alone is not an indication of a problem. What you need to do is map the IP addresses or some other information back to that, hey, I accessed the self-registration, now I saw this. What I don't know is what users were actually accessed. I know that they hit this page 10, 20, 30 times. I know that that may be 10 times per page. So I don't know how much data they actually pulled out of the environment or which additional data elements they accessed, but at least gives me an idea that they were doing it. They may have hit the page 10 times, therefore, 10, 10 per page, and I can kind of guesstimate, but I don't know for sure. And so if we pop out, I'll actually, I brought up an access log here. I apologize, this is probably gonna be really difficult to read, but and what I'll do is just go in the access log and I'll go in IBE CP or CACP and search for it. And again, now I'm seeing that, hey, somebody accessed it from this IP address. And so I know that somebody accessed the self-registration page. And I'll kind of want to go through and I gave you the URLs for the four different primary pages that might have been accessed. And you can see there's a bunch of a couple different accesses here. And then I'll actually go through and we'll look at proxy users. And I'll actually see that, hey, proxy users was actually accessed here. As you can see that the different uh, parameters in that line uh, were done. So, but I don't know what actual data they access. You can actually search and filter on that. So I, I may be able to see that they typed in an A and hit go. Therefore, I would know all the users starting with an A were probably accessed. Uh, but in terms of individual usernames and email addresses that were accessed, I don't know that information from any of these logs. And there'd actually be no place that you would ever see that in Rollkeep as a suite. So, 
those are the recommendations on how to actually protect Oracle Business Suite. Again, from very high level capabilities, some recommendations that would have stopped some of these issues in the first place. Again, App Defend would have protected you because it would block iStore unless you were using it. So it would have stopped the self registration vulnerability. Um, App Defend provides virtual patching, it blocks other security vulnerabilities because, again, Oracle Business Suite now has a target on its back. Everyone's going to, these guys know how to make money and they're going to try to find the next vulnerability so they can make several thousand dollars off of Oracle Business Suite because they know there's a huge ripe market for it. There's hundreds of different sites on the internet and that's how they can make money. So App Defend does virtual patching, blocks, is, blocks classes of security vulnerabilities, even though it may not have been patched yet by Oracle. We're providing proactive protection. As an example, as part of the January 2022 critical patch update, there was 18 vulnerabilities. App Defend out of the box without even doing an update for that critical patch update was already protecting 16 out of the 18 vulnerabilities. So we're pro providing protection against these zero day attacks. Again, Oracle Business Suite is 20,000 web pages. You want to reduce that surface area as much as possible. App Defend will do that in a very robust way, which is a way above and beyond what Oracle provides natively within the application. And then finally, we're providing single sign-on multi-factor authentication. So if you have looked at Oracle Access Manager or other products that seem too difficult to implement, App Defend is a very simple, straightforward way to do that. We do rapid implementations. We can typically be up and running within a week uh, with SSO or and or multi-factor authentication. Another thing to always check is if FND Diagnostics is enabled in your environment. So one, a number of sites had significant exposures because they had FND Diagnostics enabled. Because with FND Diagnostics, I can get into the developer council and I can execute arbitrary SQL statements to select arbitrary data like everyone in FND users, all your suppliers, all your price lists, everything in Oracle Business Suite by going through the developer council if FND Diagnostics is enabled. So you should definitely set up like in an Oracle alert, use our tool App Sentry, which will alert you if FND Diagnostics is enabled. It should never be enabled except at the user level for very privileged users, because again, you can execute SQL statements using the apps account. You should implement single sign-on because some of these vulnerabilities, this one in particular, may not have been actually remediated with single sign-on, but future vulnerabilities, single sign-on has a lot of capabilities and allows you to mitigate some of these potential issues. If you haven't implemented Oracle URL firewall, you should definitely do that if you are external. If you're internal, you should definitely be implementing the allowed resources and configuring both of these properly. Because again, we see a lot of people are not configuring the DMZ environment. Oracle on these, my Oracle support site has a very rigid DMZ configuration. Oracle Business Suite was never intended to be on the internet. And it has a number of flaws and issues. And therefore, you must follow in great detail the Oracle DMZ configuration for Oracle Business Suite. And then internally, the allowed resources fixes the surface area problem. Because again, if you're running financials, there's no reason you need to be running CRM, manufacturing, HR, uh, Oracle student system, and who knows what else is in the application. Allowed resources and URL firewall take that 20,000 pages and limits it down to those pages. Because if a security vulnerability is exploitable on a page that you're not using, if you blocked it using App Defend, URL Firewall, or Allowed Resources, it's not exploitable. This vulnerability would not be exploitable because if you're not running iStore, no one could access that page. So if you are not taking proactive protection on the application by implementing something like App Defend, or implementing the native security features within the application being URL firewall and allowed resources, you've opened yourself up to significant um, vulnerabilities and risks. At the end of the presentation, here's all the links to kind of the different things I went through. So our analysis on our website, the original Oracle security vulnerability, uh, the original vulnerability published out, as well as I included some of the links to so you can just see if you're Oracle your Oracle Business Suite environment is actually on the internet. So that's kind of just a high level overview of this vulnerability. Um, let everyone know kind of what exists and provide you some background about why we think these vulnerabilities will actually increase in the near future. Um, that 
people are making active money off of this. And if you go through those Twitter feeds, you'll actually see people say, hey, I made $1,200. I made $500. Um, so there is money and blood in the water. So therefore, people are circling Oracle Business Suite because they know it's a potentially a ripe environment. It's just enough. We anticipate at least probably two or three more of these coming out in the next six, six months to a year. Um, this is not the last time. So unless you're taking proactive protection for your Oracle Business Suite environment, um, there are potential risks here. I'll open up to any questions. Um, so the first question is, your website indicates that Oracle is saying a patch will be available in June. When they fix it, what do you believe Oracle is going to do to fix this? For example, require an approval workflow for self-registered users or something like that. Um, we think they're going to mostly fix around the managed proxies. Um, but potentially there's a number of other areas having self-registered users. But for the self-registered users, it's also iRecruitment. So having a workflow approval around iStore and iRecruitment really doesn't make sense because I want an i customer just to come into iStore, register, buy some stuff. And for iRecruitment, I want them to come in and register and basically send in a resume and apply for a job. So that's really what the self-registration capability is around. So fundamentally, the vulnerability is in managed proxies. The security advisory specified managed proxies. So therefore, we think they'll change the native managed proxies functionality to be tighter. Um, as part of the January 2022 um, critical patch update, there was a change to the way managed proxies work to actually limit some of the organizational exposures around that. Um, so really this vulnerability was if you self-registered, you had unlimited access to managed proxies. That's the fundamental problem and vulnerability here. There are some controls already around managed proxies within the application that was just these self-registered users just got on unlimited access to managed proxies. So what we believe is they'll set it up so if you do self-registration, you will not be able to actually use managed proxies. That'll be actually eliminated from your user until you're actually explicitly doing it. Um, so that's how we think we'll, they'll fix it. Uh, next question here, our WAF vendor told, told us we are protected. I tested the one page and it's blocked. Um, we've, we've seen a number of people doing recommendations um, and we've seen at least two web application firewall rule sets. Both rule sets only blocked the IBE SSO reg page. That is not the vulnerable page. The vulnerable page is actually when actually register. And so the vulnerable pages are the registration process that I can access directly. I can go to those URLs directly. I don't need to go to the IBE reg SSO page. That's just a landing page and they're just blocking that. It may stop some people, but if you're sophisticated enough and you know the two URLs behind the scenes, I can get past that pretty quickly. Um, so you have to be very careful about what they're blocking. That's why we're giving you out more than one URL and most people are focusing in on the URL. Um, second question here is, can any other sensitive data be accessed? And the answer at this point is no. We, we anticipate somebody may find some other caveat to this, a little bit of additional extension. But right now, it's just basically username, uh, person's actual name, and email address. That's all that we believe can, can be compromised at this point. Uh, next comment is, we didn't install iStore, so are we vulnerable? And the answer is yes. In the environments that we're looking at is a lot of them are just iSupplier and they don't have the URL firewall configured properly, but this iStore is configured by default. Even if you haven't installed, licensed or configured iStore, you can still hit the self-registration capability. Um, so we are not seeing anything except for the couple <clears throat> points that I put earlier about disabling self-registration or disabling the managed proxies capability um, by removing the privileges from all users. Those are the settings that disable the vulnerability by just not having iStore installed is not it. it. This is available by default in all Oracle Business Suite environments unless you've specifically changed some settings um, or if you're specifically blocking the iStore module using a product like AppDefend, URL Firewall or Allowed Resources. 
So we're up at an hour. Um, so thank you everyone for attending. Um, this we will you'll be getting an email out shortly in the next uh, 24 to 48 hours uh, with a copy to the presentation. Uh, definitely, if you have any questions about this, send us an email at infointegrity.com. Uh, we've had dozens of our clients already reaching out to us and talking to us about this and testing their environments. Um, so we're very open to uh, providing assistance. If you believe you've been a, uh, a victim of this, or if you want to ver validate that you are not vulnerable to it. So again, thank you everyone and have a great day.